What's up, Wednesday style? Wednesday style. Good morning. Before that little intro, we had Sick Puppies, and before that, Alex Claire. It is 7.30 and 47 degrees outside, and as you just heard it, it's time for What's Up Wednesday. I have Senior Master Sergeant Gibson in here with me today. How are you doing today, sir? Doing great, thanks. So, you're in here to talk to us about substance abuse. That's right. So, what is the Air Force policy on substance abuse? Well, for the Air Force, substance abuse is really a large topic. Uh, really need to differentiate between two different sides of that. There's uh, alcohol abuse and illicit drug use. Uh, alcohol abuse is considered um, substance abuse by the Air Force. Uh, the Air Force has recognized the negative impact of alcohol abuse uh, and that it can have on duty performance, behavior, physical and mental health. Uh, and for this case, uh, for that reason, in most cases, the Air Force will work with airmen uh, that have substance abuse issues with alcohol uh, to just help them out with their problems. Uh, for the other side of that, the illicit drug use pro side, uh, it's got pretty much a different situation. Uh, the Air Force is pretty clear on that, that uh, there is a zero tolerance uh, policy for illicit drug use. Uh, and now illicit drug use, a lot of people only think of the illegal drug side of that, uh, but there is also the, uh, the misuse of medication. Uh, for example, if you're taking too much of a prescription medication or you're taking a prescription medication after it's expired, uh, things along those lines, those are also uh, considered illicit drug use. Uh, in most circumstances uh, involving that, uh, it really can put an airman's career in jeopardy. Okay. And you mentioned that uh, for alcohol-related incidents that they, uh, the Air Force will kind of help people with that. Um, if an airman sought help for their problems for alcohol or even illicit drugs, um, would the Air Force just kick them out, or how do they get help? Well, and again, that's where you got to differentiate between the alcohol and the illicit drug use. Uh, for the alcohol side of that, they would help. Uh, there is the, uh, the ADAPT program uh, on base that really will help them out with that. Um, and, and that's mainly the, uh, the Air Force's goal at that point with alcohol is just to help the airmen with their problems uh, as long as there's not any illegal activity associated with the alcohol abuse. Um, they'll help them get their, their – help. Ah, the Air Force will help them with their problem, get them through that, and then uh, move on from there. Uh, for the illicit drug activity, um, unfortunately, that, that, that can have an impact on their career. Uh, now, there are waivers uh, for airmen who uh, have had illicit drug problems uh, that can stay in the Air Force. Uh, it's All I can really say on that is, I mean, it's, it's, there's so many different factors that go into that, but airmen who seek help for that have a lot better chance of uh, seeking a waiver than someone who's, say, caught up uh, during a drug screening or, or an investigation or something along those lines. Okay, so there are ways to help and it doesn't always affect your Air Force career for well for alcohol but illicit drugs are completely different it's they're illegal for more than like alcohol is legal for most people to drink that's correct so there's different standards for each that's correct and, and like I said I mean there are still ways even with the illicit drug usage um, it, it's a process um, and, and it's far from guaranteed but uh, airmen who do seek help uh, like I said they do have a lot better chance of uh, saving their career Okay, and you mentioned the ADAPT program. Are there any other programs that help? Uh, primarily here at Insulik, um, ADAPT is the best thing, uh, which ADAPT is the uh, Alcohol and Drug Abuse Prevention and Treatment Program uh, that's run by mental health. Uh, that's the primary uh, means that someone would seek help here. Uh, there are other helping agencies on base that can help with uh, a lot of the, the situations that led up to alcohol abuse, uh, such as the chaplain, uh, the mental health program, uh, the military family life counselors, uh, things like that that can help with a lot of the things that led up to people developing drug abuse or, or alcohol abuse problems. Okay. And um, as an airman, I mean, I, I've i never really had a problem with it, but if I have a wingman who I see is having difficulties with it, how does how, how do I see find ways to help them? Uh, the biggest thing that you can do um, and that everybody can do is just get to know the people around them. Uh, supervisors need to get to know their subordinates. Uh, uh, airmen need to get to know their coworkers. Uh, even airmen need, need to know their supervisors. Um, and the reason that's important is because a lot of times, or most of the time, uh, with these types of things, uh, people will see a, a major shift in behavior of people. Uh, they'll notice a change in activities. Uh, for example, somebody who goes to the gym every day, uh, and then all of a sudden you realize that they haven't been for a month and they're eating nothing but Taco Bell. Mm -hmm. uh, something's changed in their life uh, that made them go away from what they normally do. Uh, things like that can usually just be a sign of, 
either depression or alcohol abuse or even illicit drug activity. Okay. Well, I mean, if they're eating nothing but Taco Bell, there might be other problems <laughs> there as well. True. Um, and how, how do we get help if we have a problem or if someone else has a problem that we know? How do we help them get help? Uh, the best thing that can be done really is to get the individual, uh, be it yourself if you recognize you have a problem or, or one of your coworkers or someone, uh, to just come forward themselves, uh, self-identify through the ADAPT program, uh, which can be done, uh, or if they're not sure where to go or how to, how to go about that. You can always go through any of your helping agencies, uh, you can go to the chaplain, mental health, uh, like I said, directly to ADAPT, uh, contact your first sergeant, supervisor, uh, even your commander. Um, and, and again, I want to stress that most of the time with the self-identification, there's, there's, there's little to no ramifications for the individual, especially on the alcohol side of this. Um, people who self-identify and go get help on their own uh, or even with the help of one of their coworkers, uh, there's usually no, no impact whatsoever to them. Again, at that point, they just want to help them, uh, get them the help they need, get them back on the right track and go from there uh, versus someone who uh, gets involved with like an alcohol-related incident, gets picked up for a DUI, uh, you know, anything along those lines, uh, it, it starts being at that point a problem. Um, and that's why it's always better to try to get them to the help first. Okay. So it's much better to go there and bring yourself to realize that you need to get help versus have someone tell you that you need to get help. At that point, it's gone too far. Most definitely. Okay. Well, is there anything that you wanted to add? Uh, no, I think that about covers it. Again, just um, people with alcohol problems, especially, um, it, it's, 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 it's a disease. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's an addiction, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's the end of your career. Uh, a lot of people look at the negative side of that and think that uh, if they go to ask for help or they go in to see a problem, that it's going to end their career, they're going to get an Article 15 and things like that. And uh, the, the disciplinary actions that are typically associated with alcohol abuse are, are usually from the, the illegal activities that stem from the alcohol abuse, and it's not from the alcohol abuse itself. So um, th there's really no ramifications for people seeking out help for that. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for coming in, sir. It's been, been a pleasure talking to you about this, and I learned some new things today. All right. Thanks for having me. And yes, thank you, sir. And uh, coming up now, we've got a short little break and then Whistle by Flowrider right here on AFN Angelic the Eagle, serving America's best. <laughs> 